Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hollywood Mike Connolly with the double biceps. It is in the contract and legal requirement every single time we appear on camera. Welcome to the show. The co host, co founder, co breather of air, co wearer of clothes in this very room. It is, in fact, the master of disaster, the king of sting, the count of Monte Cristo, the twirling of the moustache. Every time I say that, well, I think that's your favourite. It's my favourite. My personal favourite is, in fact, the winner of the Dave Stockbridge of the Year Award. As you can see there, it is uh, Tito Ortiz choking the uh, trophy out it's definitely not a john cena ripoff with a highlighted hair uh, it is in fact dave dave stockbridge stockbridge welcome to the daily combat podcast which is your own show well thank you very much for that very very warm <laughs> welcome hollywood matt Connolly, as always and uh, today we have ourselves some very very special girls, guests so uh, for those that don't know ladies and gentlemen this is ella sabi that's right, absolutely. Oh, and, and Josh Barker. Oh, Josh Barker's here as well. Thanks, so um, <laughs> She brought Josh Barker with her. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Josh Barker, under 70 kilo, Australian arm wrestling champion. Maybe just throw us up a little double bicep, or a little double bicep, and then just the right arm, just for those. Look at that. Look at that forearm. That's that's almost otherworldly. There's aliens that have got less <laughs> development in their uh, tendons than you do. And uh, so, uh, so tell us a bit about the, the Josh Barker story. Like, how did arm wrestling begin for you? Because we, we're holding... So you're part of the Apex uh, Sport Fest um, and the AWE One. So that's uh, uh, at the Nord Oval. That's uh, just a matter of days away. That's why you're in studio today because... Uh, down from Queensland, uh, Sydney. New South Sydney. Wales. Sorry, my yeah. mistake. So He's down from your shirt. The Sydney Spartans, <laughs> Sydney Spartans T-shirt. So um, Sydney Spartans are based I'd, in Queensland. I'd, yeah, I, I, I thought they might have been generous and just given you a shirt because you're such a nice guy. And uh, but uh, so over, over from Sydney for the uh, for the Apex Sport Fest and AWE One. Um, you're uh, but you uh, how 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 is it that you even got into competitive arm wrestling in the first place? Um, uh, 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 Josh, <laughs> I, I think I went down a tangent. No, because where I was going is because this is the you thought this was going to be hard for you guys, right? Just imagine how hard this is for me. Like, I, I talk for a living, and this is still hard. <laughs> so, uh, what I was actually the, the, where the tangent I was going down, and 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 it was worthwhile because this is the first time that an arm wrestling uh, event of this nature is being held in the cage, and it's NISCA certified. MMA cage, but you're no stranger to the cage, Josh Parker. No. Maybe we can just edit that that minute or so before. <laughs> no, that's all I'm putting in. Yeah. <laughs> you're no stranger to the cage, so you, you've got an MMA background, but then found your way into arm wrestling. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I used to train at arm. <laughs> that was just going to be the response. To you. All that build yes. up. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I used to train at our freestyle fighting gym, full circle mixed martial arts, and I loved the whole com- combative like sports. But with my eyesight, it wasn't like something I could pursue any further. And I wanted something that was you know still in the combat sports. I mm. uh, saw online Facebook Shannon Michaels Illawarra mm. arm wrestling. Yeah. Went to a training session, fell in love with it. <laughs> because I was muscly from the you know bodybuilding background. I thought, how is this skinny dude beating me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big biceps and I, I was losing. I know your pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just had to know how to do this. And then, yeah, went to Sydney Arm Wrestling. I can't stop. That's all I think about. So so tell us about your, your eyesight because that was the thing that stopped you going. Physically, you were great in, in MMA. You could have yeah. gone on and, and been a pro and, and continued down that path. But your, your eyesight, you were saying, you, you couldn't get the timing or you couldn't... Yeah, you, it gets blurry after a while. So oh. after a, a round or two, you, you yeah. were struggling to remain focused? Yeah. Yeah. And and could they have just fixed that surgically or anything for you? Uh, yeah, the surgery was quite expensive and it wasn't guaranteed. And mm. I didn't want to take the risk to re, you know, the yeah. risk for it. And um, after you have surgery, you're not meant to get hit in the eye. Yep. And so. you never may. So. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a punch or two. Maybe. Please. Not, not the face, not the eye. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and so it, it, you... you so you've found that through arm wrestling, you were um, still able to that, yeah. yeah keep that competitive, competitive, yeah. uh, and and gives you a reason to train. And did you find that your days from bodybuilding were helpful by the time you you kind of got serious about arm wrestling? I think it gave me the general strengths, but arm wrestling is a different ballpark. Mm. It is so different. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, it is, and and it's one of those things that you feel it, it's like a magic trick, like somebody's doing yeah. something that that. Is, 
It's like I'm so I know I'm stronger than this person, and they are just destroying me, and I can't do anything. It's, it's like you're finding the techniques and how to yeah. keep somebody else out of their strength. But uh, one of the one of the, th- the things that really interests me is your style. Is that you're known as a bit of a specialist in yeah. in one certain technique of the press. Mm. And uh, if anyone says uh, who's good at pressing in Australia, that you would be top of the list for that that name. Yeah, and, uh, regardless of weight category. That's right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, winning against heavyweights in his own club with this press is just insane. It, it's explosive. You're off the go, and the people that that don't know what the press technique is. Uh, essentially, you, you're you off. Off with your ref, referee will wind your hands up fairly, and when they say go, you're putting your entire body weight and exploding down with your your tricep and your body weight straight to the pad, and it's almost that the match ends in half a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like reverse hammer curl almost. Like yeah. that's the that's the kind of like the motion. Exactly. But when when did you discover that you were a presser? Because most people aren't naturally pressers mm. in arm wrestling. And when did you find out that was your your um, superpower? Uh, I used to go in like deep hook and that was my favourite thing but mm. I, I like the way how effective it is and the press doesn't get tired. Mm. You know, you're in a long bicep match, mm. the press is always there. I don't get tired elbow joints, don't get tired nothing, you know, mm. so it's ends the match quickly, you can be effective, get to the tournament. Yeah. It's such a good move. Mm. Did you sort of naturally gravitate towards it? Like, yeah, I, it I still good. can't bloody do it. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our styles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just cannot coordinate the movement of it. But, but mm. obviously it's something that came naturally for you. Was, was it that you went from the hook and you, uh, whoever was instructing you said, well, this is how you do a press, or did it just feel natural? It like just felt natural to go in that way. Right. You know, some people drag hook, and I started leaning towards, you know, going in, and then... I just started doing it and loved it. Do, yeah, do yeah. you do train any differently for the press? Like, do you train to get stronger specifically yeah, in that yeah. movement? Because I don't think a lot of arm wrestlers would necessarily be training too hard on that press. So, but what, what kind of mo- movements are you doing in order to get stronger just for that? It's a lot of hand. Mm. <laughs> you know, you might not think so. Um, tricep mm-hmm. and a lot of conditioning in your elbow. Mm. Uh-huh. Press can go so wrong. Like sometimes I get really badly hurt when I press. Someone like Mario or something catches yes. me. It's a long road to recovery. <laughs> yeah, yeah you got to be willing to put your body on the line. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things when we're showing beginners through arm wrestling techniques. Um, Definitely you know, not start there. No. <laughs> <laughs> First thing, <laughs> let's get you pressing as hard as we can. No. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why I haven't actually learned how to do it because because like uh, most of the time in, in clubs you'll, you'll you'll start with a top roll and then eventually you'll sort of work to the, the hook style and, and then they'll sort of be like and there's this other thing <laughs> <laughs> called the press but you know it, you it don't does do come that. with a risk and <laughs> it, it really does carry uh, an element of danger with it where uh, you know you can you can get hurt if it mm. does go wrong and have you had any of those injuries kind of emerge I have yeah yeah it's and what was the worst of them it was actually versus in Oz from mm-hmm. Sydney, and I tried to press that side of my shoulder, and it just takes long road to recovery, 12 weeks, yeah. longer, like, yeah. Wow. Was Gotta it be safe. Elbow that, that was... Yeah, elbow, yeah. Right. yeah. I actually went and got um, checked, and I was uh, uh, bursitis or something mm. in my shoulder. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm not sure, I can't remember explaining it, yeah, but something was inflamed, and it was causing, it causing impingement. Mm. Yeah, and... Ouch. It takes you out of it for ages. You've got to be safe. and It does, absolutely. Yeah. Did, were you able to arm wrestle at all during that time? Were you I wasn't to? meant to, but I kept <laughs> going. <laughs> I kept going. I can't help myself. <laughs> that's right. And, and Next week, back to pressing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> won't be able to arm wrestle anymore. So uh, go uh, straight to arm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and and Ella, you've now been introduced to the sport as well. Did you? Were you involved in the sport at all beforehand, before you guys knew each other? Or? No, I like a hobby that people did at pubs and stuff like that and then yep. I found out it was a sport and all the technique and how much there is behind it I was kind of shocked and surprised but kind of fell in love with it at the same time I was like it's really interesting yeah so, so you guys get on the table and, and train at home is that what's kind of going on a little yeah, bit yeah fantastic and and getting stronger yourself like yeah yeah trying to Incredible. Improve, yeah. Left hand specialist. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. Pretty uh, strong. She might not look her, but she's got some power. <laughs> <laughs> Are you naturally left handed? I'm right handed. Oh, so there you go. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know how it Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a certain style that you've started to gravitate towards? Oh, at the moment, just top roll, but I want to be able to press. Right. I want like a power all, couple We all do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we both want to go on a You can get like finish. matching t shirts just yeah, for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Press. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was great. So top rolling at the moment, that seems to work well for you. Um, do you ever do you ever go in the hook at all or you just feel like, hey, I'm going to top roll and then if I have to, I might maybe I'll start working towards a press sort of thing? Yeah, sometimes during training I practice with the girls trying to hook and stuff like that, just trying a bit of everything and getting comfortable in all sorts. But at the moment, mostly just hook. Oh, yeah, top right. roll, sorry. Uh, oh, top, top roll. roll. <laughs> <laughs> top. What, what's the uh, what, what's the the female scene in in Sydney like at the moment? Is it growing? Do you think? Or yeah, yeah, it's growing at the moment. It's just the three of us. Every now and then, a new female comes along. But yeah, at the moment, it's just the three main that it goes continuously each week. Yeah. yeah. Who's the other ones that you've got uh, in the club? Now? Steph and Yu Ying. Oh, okay, uh, do you know yeah. Bowen's girlfriend? Left Bowen Cantado. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Stephanie, yeah. she won nationals recently. Wow. Yeah. And Yu Ying went up a weight class. Yeah. Wow. And did pretty well. Third, came, I think. No, I think she came second, actually. Second. Yeah. Amazing. Very strong women. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Amazing. It does seem to be. We, we, we sort of have people that come through the club, um, and this is the same with male or female. People sort of gravitate in for a while and then they'll float away. Yeah. Um, and we had at one point about seven girls that were training mm. and it was going really well. Um, I think the majority of them were partners of guys that were coming along and then sort of the guy lost interest and then obviously that they've stopped and at yeah. the moment we've only got uh paula that's every now and then at the club uh but yeah it does seem to be that we you know we'd love to have more females in the sport um and yeah it seems to be one of those things that it's hard to keep them like to retain the interest uh if, if they're coming along as part of a couple it does seem to be that uh if one drops away, the other one goes as well. Yeah. Yep. Do, do you think why that might be? Like, do you think that there's uh, – is there anything that arm wrestling can do to be more inclusive of women or to make it easier? Or, or is it just one of those things that's kind of like a, a boys' thing anyway? Or oh, At the moment, I think it's a bit of a boys' thing. But I can think it's definitely you able to change and involve more women. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, just need more women to know more about it, I suppose. Yeah, just mm. exposure. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think yeah. that's the same with, with most of the sports. Like we had uh, Nora Schultz in just before, and uh, she's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu world champion. Um, and, you know, it's like jiu-jitsu is growing uh, in immensely at the moment, the grappling sports. And it was prior to that you had you know the MMA that, that really, um, seeing it go from the ground level and becoming one of the superstar sports of, of the modern era. Uh, so it seems to be that... Um, like women will come along as the sport grows as well. So when the sport starts reaching a certain point of exposure, then that's when you know more people are finding out about it and more people are like, oh, um, this is a thing. I still get people going, oh, is arm wrestling a thing yeah. all the time? And it's like, yes. yes. <laughs> that's why we've got the shirts. That's right. Here, watch, watch 20 minutes of video. <laughs> <laughs> and do you find that, like, when you're in conversation with uh, other people, you kind of end up just naturally talking about arm wrestling and kind of like yeah, being, being the arm wrestling <laughs> prophets? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so hard to explain to a new guy about like not using your body. Yeah, you think it's about like putting your hand on your head and just using your arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like, yeah, like, you're, you're cheating, and it's so <laughs> hard to like <laughs> tell. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where that came from because that is a popular misconception, a bit of an urban myth, yeah. isn't it? That yeah, you know, you turn arm wrestling, you got to basically be on on, on one leg have no balance mm. only only use side pressure yeah. and, and be outside of your body yeah. at all times <laughs> be in the most <laughs> dangerous possible position you just be yeah ready to break your arm yeah, yeah right, basically right. yeah the, the least safe position seems to be maybe that's why arm wrestling had that bit of a <laughs> reputation at one, at one yeah. point as well yeah there's so many people like if you start the conversation about arm wrestling they will either say oh. yeah either say um uh, oh, is that a thing? <laughs> and, or they'll say, I don't want to do that, I'll break my arm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And because people are doing that, just literal side pressure, you know, and they'll get the other person to do that as well. Mm. In the, If you're doing that, there's only one of three things that's going to happen is you're going to pin them, they're going to pin you, or one of your arms is going to break. Mm. <laughs> Pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got that much force that's going through. Uh, Humorous bone, yeah. Exactly, and it's all on the bone. So I always say that to people. Like, if they if they ever question, you know, well, what I'm doing, it's like, well, actually, that's probably the most unsafe and most <laughs> dangerous way to do it, the way that you're talking about right there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it's all about that safe position. And as you see, like, in the in the upper levels of professional arm wrestling, how often do you see an, you an injury? Don't. Yeah, yeah. Like it's one every ten years, maybe. Yeah. Um, the only one I can think of off the top of my head is Michael Todd, and he used to pull in like the worst possible <laughs> positions yeah. for for so long and such so many years at an elite level before he had an arm break. So mm. 
Yeah, it's, it's one of those misconceptions that, that people have. Um, and I think it's because people are getting on the kitchen table and arm wrestling their friends with no idea what they're doing mm. and somebody gets hurt. It's the same. I was uh, using the analogy of having a boxing ring and, and just putting two people in there who have never boxed and being like, yeah, well, punch on. Yeah, have a go at each other there. <laughs> see, what hap- see what happens. Yeah. Someone's got to get hurt. It's, yeah. a, it's the same thing for arm wrestling. If you don't know what you're doing, yeah, the risk is just enormous. Mm. But uh, with, with proper technique, I mean, you know, the stress just goes on mainly on the bicep and, and you just get pinned before anything can happen. So obviously you've got the, you know, the soft tissue injuries, joints, and as you were talking about before, bursitis and just overuse yeah. injuries that come with any sort of grappling sport. But mm. in terms of major injuries, I mean, it's one of the safest sports out there, you could say. Yeah. yeah. How, how long did it take you to get that specialised uh, conditioning, or for both of you, really? Um, when At what, what point did your arm stop hurting after training and you were able to actually go to work the next day and still do hurting. stuff. <laughs> still or, hurting or, now. Or is that not <laughs> still aching? <laughs> still aching for you, Ella? Yeah. <laughs> you just go home, you can't open jars or anything. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had that, you're going home and you're driving like this. <laughs> yeah. Someone cut you off, you can't even like... <laughs> <laughs> but about two years, man. Oh, Only yeah. because I tried to train like just side pressure, open hand side pressure, and it, it took a very long time to get where it's like, no matter what position I'm in now, like my elbow holds up. Yeah, yeah. And and how long have you been training uh, in arm wrestling now? Five six years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And and what's been your observation of the sport in that period of time and how it's grown and it's now? Unbelievable, man. Our club, like everybody's club. I don't know what your club's like, but forty sometimes fifty people at the it's club. Just Matt and I. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it has Lots grown. of room for improvement. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So you got 40, 50 people turning up now yeah, to training session. Yeah. Incredible. And when you first started, what was it like then? I think a lot of people have like an ego thing. You get mm. the big guy that comes in, he loses to the little guy and he, he either can't take it mm. or he wants to know like how I was. Mm. I was losing the little guy and I wanted to know how I was losing to him. Yeah. And fix it. But you get the guy that's just like, I can't take this and doesn't come back. Yeah. But yeah. It's <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and 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 did you start competing pretty much straight away, or yeah. was there a time before you started thinking about getting on the table and and competing seriously? I just every match I was versing Oz, all the top guys from the beginning. Yeah. I just kept losing for years, but that's I got to a point where I stopped losing. Hmm. <laughs> How long did that take? Oh, with Oz only recently. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it took seven years. I climbed the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and with Mario, never. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a, a, slight, a slight weight discrepancy between yeah. the two of you there. <laughs> but yeah. we're going to see you in a matchup against one of our local, uh, Ooh, yeah. local guys here. The number mm. one rank in South Australia, uh, Taran Broad. And, uh, the this Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus, <laughs> that's right. This should be a, an epic battle. Uh, you guys have matched up a few times before yep. in the past. Uh, most recently, at Garage Wars. And is that correct? That was the that's most correct. recent yep. one. Uh, what is this? Three to one. I Three think. to one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So Taran is very much a, a strength-based, uh, powerful, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Whereas you know, it's almost the and we keep likening this when we do our promo stuff for your match is that it's speed versus power. Yeah. And it feels that way very much that you know the match is going to be won or lost in that first second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you either got to press him or he's got to stop it, and then yeah. he'll work his way through. But uh, yeah, it should be exciting. Um, is that how you see the match maybe panning out, or have I you got other might, plans in mind? <laughs> I think I might shock people. My power is oh. not. It's not low. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yep. but Taron is definitely the favourite. You gotta give it to him. He's got arms like bigger than Levan's. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a miniature. It's the downside, yeah, like man. it's just that you're yeah, scaled down. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Every time I see him, like yeah, big shot. He's built for arm wrestling, isn't he? Yeah. Besides the short, short forearm and short hand, but he's really worked on his weaknesses. Mm. And man, yeah, he's force to be reckoned with. But I think I've got him this time, man. Yeah, I, just, I really do. And <laughs> and in your matchups previously, what 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 was it that you identified that you thought, you know, what if I just get that right, maybe that's going to be the difference next I time. I think his um cut was just way too strong. Okay. He was turning my pronation over. I couldn't I couldn't compete with him. He was just too powerful. Yeah, yeah. And then I think it was more the speed versus strength. Mm-hmm. But I think I've got some lanes where my strength might be able to 
Oh, mm. man. Watching Harms are and stuff. I've got some ideas. Ah, <laughs> there you go. Oh. So you've been tuning in and, and watching some of the live yeah, streams. Yeah, Harms are, Laz, seeing how they do it. Yeah. And just practicing at that train. And, and that's interesting because you are more, you've got more reach and you're, you do, are a yeah. linkier kind of athlete yeah. and, and Taryn's very compacted. And yep. so you, you, you saw these other taller competitors and kind took of saw, <laughs> took some notes. There you go. <laughs> very right. interesting. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you do a bit of that normally when you, when you compete? Do you check it, the, the footage or the available uh, imagery out there and see you know, what, what what might be a pathway forward? I have been starting to like be more versatile. Before mm. I was just a press. Yeah, but I realise you have to have other options. You know, you can't always go your way. Mm. And yeah, I've been working with the boys at Sydney and trying to develop my top roll, my hands, my pronation. And it gives my arm a rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, just stop to your butt hurting quite yeah. as much. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. It does seem to be the way for the, the find the trickiest matchups are when somebody can either press or their top roll and they're sitting, when they set up, they're sitting in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know which way tricky. they're going. Yeah. And you're trying to watch the shoulder as to like, is he going backwards or forwards? <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, go, and you've guessed wrong and you just get pinned. Uh. It's like, damn it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it really is one and lost in the in the first few minutes, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what is life at home? Are you just constantly talking about arm wrestling? Is that what's going on, Ella? Are you, or do you get to a point where there's too much arm wrestling <laughs> in our lives? Maybe <laughs> Not for me. Not for you. <laughs> yeah, it's constantly about arm wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> he wakes up first thing it says it, yeah really <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing a mattress and she's yeah. like <laughs> that's so, awesome do, so when you when you're consuming uh, arm wrestling content apart from Hollywood Matt Connolly's uh, YouTube channel of course it, are, are there any others that you kind of would go to and check out and, and kind of get, get your news from like how are you keeping on top of the arm wrestling world at the moment I like uh, Ryan Bowen's stuff Lockie mm-hmm. Adairs and Voice of Arm Wrestling yeah. know, Yannis and Coach Ray mm. they have a lot of helpful tips man yeah. they're my main ones yeah yeah and sure. and who, who in terms of um an athlete at the moment do you kind of see somebody who's you think well that's some so that's a, a potential competitor for me in the in the not too distant future that's the standard i'd like to shoot for are there any kind of names or basically anybody you want to shout you know call out right now <laughs> <laughs> i do want to get up there man like i don't think i'm at the world elite yet but i want to get up there where i'm recognized you know internationally if i can get mm. in the top 20 top 15 and just keep going i do want to be world champ someday yeah i truly do yeah that's yeah. right is uh, that in the under 70 division you'd be under 70 at? yeah i right. do think i hold my weight very well yeah for sure. everyone that sees me like you look 80 yeah, you do. And I'm like 68, 66, <laughs> whatever. You don't have any legs, do you? Like this oh. <laughs> we wheeled you in here earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure the chair height was yeah. right. So, <laughs> <covered>. <laughs> so, so my um, legs are 17 inch and my forearm are about 15.5. Yeah. <laughs> did you say your forearm measurement is the same as your bicep measurement? Oh, uh, yeah, within a half an inch. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that just shows the development you've got in that forearm. And when you yeah. can see when you pose it, the pronation muscle is just. Like when it gets pumped, it looks yeah, that's out of crazy. control. It's yeah. just insane. Yeah, absolutely. We, we I wish we had some weights here now. <laughs> <laughs> just get a little pump, just so people can see what we've seen. That's right, that's right. But it, it should be a, a crazy match uh, with you and Taryn this weekend. And uh, it is, I think, the fact that maybe Taryn is feeling very confident yeah. that that could be his undoing is uh, that. Mm. You know, oh, well, I've beaten him a few times before. Being you know, the underdog yeah. can help, can't it? Yeah, mm. right. I have nothing to lose. Exactly. Going in all that. Exactly. And I've right. got a lot of my team here. I've got all the boys coming up in my corner. So that's right. That's mm. right. It'll be a big following, and it mm. uh, it'll be an amazing event. We've got it'll be on Ryan Blue Bowen's YouTube channel. Everyone that is interested, at your match will be streamed free. It'll be one of the free awesome, matches that people yeah. can see. And yeah. Uh, so it'll be Saturday at 12 p.m. Adelaide time, which I think in the U.S. is about 8 p.m. Um, but if mm. you are watching from that area, just type in uh, Adelaide <laughs> and then your time zone. and uh, It'll come up. That's right. You'll, yeah. fi- you'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think the second match off the back will be uh, yourself and Taryn. So awesome. Get yeah. the crowd going. And, and right. uh, you, you, have you got uh, any bold predictions for any of the other matchups that might be happening? Honestly, I love this event because none of the matchups are like, I don't see any of them white walk. Mm. You know, I don't think anyone's like mismatched trio. I reckon all of them. Mm. I couldn't put money on it, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and Quintar's coming out of retirement. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 That, that's good. 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 So excited for that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that's going to be massive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that's a hard one because you just yeah. can't answer the question. You, you need this to happen. There's <laughs> yeah. no, no empirical evidence otherwise available to us, other than you know, Gunter's was great, and you know Mario's on the pathway to greatness, and you don't know where that intersection <laughs> yeah. re- exactly happens. But either way, one of those big men are going to be walking out of the cage with a with a strap across their shoulder right. as a heavyweight AWE champions, right. and, uh, and and we've got uh, Lachlan Carpenter who will be pulling Ryan Blue. Bl- Bowen mm. afterwards yeah so this is yeah so this is uh, uh we've had to you know mix it up a little bit because uh we have brett coots who was uh, coming over and uh, can't make it now and so ryan said well you know what lachlan's been priming himself and lachlan's the current open weight champion yep, uh, yeah. at, at a national level and uh was uh, looking to test himself against uh, former champion brett coots mm-hmm. and uh won't get that chance, but he really has to step up to, in order to <laughs> prove himself against Ryan Blue yeah. Bowen. So, uh, yeah. so that'll be that'll be interesting. Uh, will, will a slightly fatigued Ryan Blue Bowen be able to hold back the tide <laughs> against the the young man that's Lachlan right. Carpenter? Yeah. Um, and so that that's interesting. Uh, where, where, where would you see that one go? Ryan's endurance is insane. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled him after like a couple of hours, and his strength like never drops off. It always hmm. is at a High level, but I got to back my boy Lockie, of course. Okay, you know, he's from Sydney, man. I got to back him. And yeah. Ellie, you're going to go the same. Yeah, definitely. Gonna you're going to go with Lockie. Yeah, yeah. I guess you got to see him in a couple of weeks' time. So you better, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, we'll probably see him yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, we don't know when this will be released. Oh um, right, yeah. <laughs> it's not um, pre-recorded at all. <laughs> <laughs> One of my um, favorite matches is actually um, the juniors. Yeah, Jamie yeah. and Hamza. I wanted that. Mm. I've been wanting to watch that for ages. Mm. See. <laughs> yeah, that's and, right. Because there's a few bets going on that you, too. Have, have you <laughs> pulled both athletes? I have. So you're one of the few people in, in the country that has actually pulled yeah. both athletes. So I think Hamza is very, very underrated. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that mm. was our feeling as well. Yes. Um, Especially when he beat me five zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the, the yeah, yeah the, we, we felt that it, we could feel harms are getting stronger by the week, and I'm sure Jamie and like a lot of these young men are the same. You know. They're, yeah. they're seemingly putting on five kilos and growing an inch every week, and uh, but uh, with Hamza, it, the it, the growth was was um, um, just amazing. Yeah, it's almost know. visually, he was getting taller every week as, as he's <laughs> as he's warming up with you. Uh, he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> rises getting That's higher. right. You need to adjust your grip. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, kind of amazing, and uh, so yeah, that that's a that's a going to be a super inch. Oh, we've got to go with Hamza on that one. Yeah, my money is literally on yeah, Hamza. It's literally on Hamza, <laughs> and how are you going with that? Bro, I don't know. Most underrated against maybe the most. Uh, well, he's, well, that's not called Jamie overrated. I think he's done a lot to get his yeah, reputation. He has, yeah, he's yeah. gone overseas and done a fair bit, but uh, awesome, it, yeah. is he overrated? That's what I'm I saying. I don't know. Yeah. No. Well, that's not. I've never we don't know. On, I've never been on the table with Jamie. I felt but, him at um, over the top and couldn't move me, and then I felt him in New South Wales, and it's getting closer and closer. James, mm. he's putting in the work, man. He's, like, literally obsessed with the sport. Mm. It's like a mental problem. He <laughs> <is>. <laughs> There's going to be a prescription <laughs> yeah. drug out for this very, very soon. <laughs> the doctors are just going to be throwing it around. Um, no and Ellie, you're going in the same way? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't think I could pick a side, honestly. Mm. Okay. So okay. harms it for you? Okay. Um, $50. Um, <laughs> is that a 50 <laughs> under the table? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, who else have we got? Uh, Hollywood. Um, uh, so yeah, we was Lass uh, and Tom. Lass and Tom. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. we've got the the uh, under ninety kilo champion Tom Demkowski, and he is taking on the number two, currently r- ranked number two, uh, the Berserker. Last mm. month, who was ranked number one until uh, Taran Tyrannosaurus Broad recently took that title back off of him. Yes, but uh, yeah, that should be really interesting. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I think Jake Ward explained that matchup as it's like uh, it's a. It's Tom pulling as smooth as silk yeah. and versus the rough as guts, uh, Lass mm. was the berserker style. Yeah. So it should be a crazy match up there. Lass is so explosive. You just don't know you don't know what he's gonna bring to the table and, and uh and, and Tom's a bit of an, an unknown quantity as well, you know, apart from his recent victory. There's not a lot known about him, but that was enough for us to pay attention and know that he was at that, that level now. And uh as a matter of fact, uh, I, I think Laz might have Called out to him and to uh, and and to Christian Bose. I think he's called every single person out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. called Josh yeah. out as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's unreal, by it. That's a good attitude, man. Just go for it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. That's, That's right. It. Yeah, rather than sort of sitting back and going, yeah, maybe, and yeah. he's yeah. like, no, I want to beat them. <laughs> yeah, take him, other, him, and him. Yeah, <laughs> his list was: I want to beat Josh Barker, and then I want to beat uh, who was it, Christian Bowes, and I want to beat. The, and the, the, yeah. Um, so he had, uh, uh, he had a plan, a list of people that he wants to take out, and yeah. it all. I think it culm- culminated with Ryan Bowen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end of the road, this right. Ryan Bowen waiting, waiting at the park, at the top of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, standing across the table. <laughs> yeah. <That's right. laughs> But yeah, we have got Christian Bowes. Uh, he'll be taking on uh, one of our local boys, Stephen Carroll. Oh, Stephen yeah. Carroll. Yeah, so it was a, a last-minute replacement match as well. Um, unfortunately, Brett Coots was originally scheduled to face Christian, but uh, yeah, unable to attend the event. Right. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it will be a left-handed match. Uh, Stephen is uh, looking very powerful lately and mm. uh, sitting at 135 kilos. Benching 180 kilos. Yeah. Um, wrestling curling, 70, 70 kilos. 70 kilo dumbbells. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that'll be interesting to see. I, I believe that they had a match um, up in Canberra. It was either in Canberra or in Sydney whenever uh, mm. Stephen had a trip through there once and he had a, a bit of a match with Christian. I said it was reasonably close. So, mm. uh, yeah, he's out for revenge, I think. And he was desperate to get that match up. He was saying, because originally it was Las Bonita that was uh, going to be facing Christian. Uh, and then last injured his left arm. And mm. so uh, Brent Coote said, I'll step in. And then unfortunately Brett couldn't make it. But the whole time Stephen was there going, up. I'll, I'll <laughs> take <laughs> the match. If, anyone, if oh. anyone gets injured, give me the match, give me the match. And then when Brett got the match, he was like, you said you were going to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't mean to not do you. Like you, guys <laughs> have, you guys have adapted really well, I think. Right. Hasn't gone your way like AWE, you know, at the start. <laughs> All yeah. the matches like drop yeah. out. But you guys, you know what I mean? It's been Your it's team been uh, has, yeah adjusted yeah. really well. I think yeah, yeah. we've we've lost uh, two or three actually three, three main events. There's only two the world knows about, <laughs> but right. there was a third there in was between. A secret somebody that uh, will be at the second uh, event. AWE two. Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> the uh, nobody knows who that is. Mm. Everyone is speculating. Even though Josh Barker passed know. four times. <laughs> 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 that's right. Even last night, like, I won't tell anyone. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but the big announcements, big announcements coming with respect to that, of course, um, which uh, the world will find out more on Saturday. So mm. about AWE two. Yeah. Um, so, um, and uh, we've got, uh, yeah, some very exciting news with respect to that so yeah. um uh, and the, the great thing is that uh, anybody who does win a title at awe one will have to defend that title within the first six months so right. uh by awe three you'll see all of these champions back on the on the table um so um uh, and of course there's a there's a pathway to uh, to other belts that'll be opening up as well so mm. um we'd really like to see you know, so for instance, uh, in in a lightweight category, you know, the under seventies category, yeah. you know, you're you're at the point now where really we've got to go international in order to I find someone so. who's going to yeah. who's going to be competitive, and uh, so that opens up. You know, it's hard to have a lightweight title when you don't really have that. Uh, it would be great if we had somebody to for you to compete against in the same way as some of these guys are trying to find their level. Well, we know that your level's somewhat higher than everybody else's yeah. at that. So we're going to have to find some crazy Kazakh guy or <laughs> he's just training in the mountains right now. <laughs> just, 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 he's just, just doing, doing one, arm, one arm chin up yeah. nonstop. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have a question. What do you guys think about like a woman, like putting women on the AWE yeah. at some stage? Like, you know, someone like um, Top Guys. Ah, oh, there was this girl from Melbourne that beat um, Steph. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, Steph, national champion. And I know she wants revenge, something mm. like that. Yeah. I mean, we'd, we'd be open to putting on the best matches we possibly can. And that's what we've been doing for this card is trying to find, well, what's the most entertaining match that we want to see? Yeah, what's yeah. the most <laughs> interesting match yeah. up? That's right. Yeah. And so if it emerges that, you yeah, know, there's, there's uh, two girls that it's like, oh, man, I'd love to see that match. Mm. We'll be doing what we can to, to get that ending. But I, uh, I think what you'll find is uh, there's a common thread amongst uh, most of the matchups and that there's some kind of story, some kind of rivalry. Sure some yeah. kind of history so there's yours and Taryn's and you know it's not like like for like and that that's kind of interesting you know Taryn's got the weight advantage um, uh, you've got you've got the speed he's got the strength but you've met up against each other it's been close could go either way and now there's an opportunity to kind of work this through and you know, like you say, perhaps you're the underdog walking into it. So if you walk away with that big victory, all of a sudden it's like, well, okay, you've blown the doors off the idea of a lightweight, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, but there, there's uh, there's that. And then we've, um, you know, of course, um, uh, with um, uh, with Mario and Gunter's, you know, Gunter's, um, there's a bit of a backstory with that as well that um, many people might not know of. And that is that Gunter's has been slowly training in the background for some time. And uh, he's, he's, he's got two teenage boys that are 
massive Latvian giants just like <laughs> like the dad. And uh, they've been dragging him down the gym and he's been doing a little bit of weights. He's and looking then he, big. Then he's returned <laughs> to the table and he's been doing, you know, and uh, he never really lost much strength, it would appear. And then, uh, uh, of course, one of the reasons why Gunter's dropped out of competition was because there wasn't much competition left for him. So for Gunter's uh, to see a rival perhaps that's worthy in, in Mario was, uh, was really interesting to us. Now... Uh, we had a competition uh, in this very building mm. um, just back in October and uh, Mario was slated to appear and Gunters would have come to challenge Mario in that situation. Oh. Now, Mario wasn't able to make it and Gunters came and was quite disappointed that Mario wasn't here. So this is the match-up. This is Gunters has been mentally preparing for this for mm. best part of six months now and uh in his mind this has uh, been a long time coming so it's just the rest of the world doesn't know much of that backstory and of course mario <coughs> uh, during that time has kind of proven himself to be the man to beat you know and uh and now you've got gunters who was that man thinking you know maybe it's time to see see how uh how the old man goes and yeah, um, right. so uh <laughs> let, will, will a bit of rig and rust uh, be the difference or will you know that is a champion always a champion and there's Mario to be the man, got to beat the man. And yeah. uh, so, uh, but that's for the heavyweight title. So, yeah, um, yeah most of these matchups uh, do have a really good story that's attached to them. Now, even uh, the stand in match with Stephen Carroll and, and Christian Bowes, you know, there was that, mm-hmm. that was that meeting in Canberra, and, and Stephen was a, a lighter, smaller version of himself then. And since then, he's probably put on another 15 kilos yeah. um, <laughs> and, uh, and is now a much stronger, bigger version of himself. And uh, so, maybe that'll be the difference uh, on the table so mm. very intriguing matchups mm. and uh you know we'd, that's uh that's part of the what we hope will be compelling viewing um no one wants everybody wants to see a war 100 you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah so in terms of um having women on the card it's sort of like you know, if there was a, a storyline between two combat combatants regardless as to who they were uh male or female but it's like you know we're, we're not going to put it's got to have a girls hype. on just yeah. for the fact of we just put to have girls match on. It's like mm. we want we want to see something we really want to see, and it doesn't yep. matter, you know, whether or not they're male or female. But it's like if you had two girls, and it's like, oh my god, I really want to see this match between these two. We'll, we'll get it happening, but yeah. uh, just to do like a token. No, uh, we we'll guess we'll do a, a lightweight match. I guess we'll do like a mm. you know this sort of a match. It's like we don't want to do that. We want to just put the matches on the best possible matches yeah. that we want to see. So high standard. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, if there was a, a Ronda Rousey type moment, you know, to, to happen in arm wrestling, you know, we'd very much want to be a part of that. Mm. So, uh, but uh, you know, uh, at this stage, um, it's hard to find too many. Uh, and in the same ways that you perhaps it's hard for you to find a lot of competition in the club. You know, it's hard. Yeah, uh, yeah until there's that volume coming through of, of quality female. Male uh, competitors, it becomes difficult to understand at what point you know they find their way onto the stage. So, yeah, but I, I think that's part of the future. Mm. You yeah. saw it the same with with uh, the UFC and until and that Matt and I are competing in the Trans League, <laughs> <laughs> I'll join you. <laughs> Damn it! It's the No Josh Barker that, League. That was, that was our chance. That was our chance <laughs> of gold. <laughs> you gave it away. <laughs> Could have been a contender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. But you're still the same with the UFC and in terms of the, the female uh, being able to like uh, sort of get to the level where they would have an interest enough to for the, you know, the UFC to, to be like, okay, the standard has written, risen to the point where uh, we can find a superstar and we can put on these matches that people really want to see. We're not yeah. doing it just for the sake of doing it. It's like we really want to see this girl versus this girl. And that's the sort of the same thing that we want to do. It's like, you know, the best people, the best matches we can possibly put on is what we want to do. So, And mm. you will be one of those this yeah. Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, how are you feeling going into it? Um, I get the phantom pains. Yeah. <laughs> you feel, you know, you're fresh and stuff. And then right before the match, a couple of days, you start getting mm. sore. Mm. And you're like, yeah. Like, just stop at you, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that even come from. I've been wrapped up in cotton wool for the last three days. What's going on? <laughs> better not act up on the day, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you ever sort of get that, that nervous anticipation? Oh, yeah, I do. It's very hard to intro. I think the hardest thing is an arm wrestler is um, trying to peak. Mm. I've got uh, Lockyer there as my coach. Like, mm. he's took me to the next level. But trying to find the right... You know, when you take too much time off, you feel mm. like your D trains, but if you train too long, like, I was a comp... And you, you never think you've done the right amount of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard to find that balance point. And do you, do you have to diet down or you kind of just walk around? I just and eat around KFC. And that doesn't know <laughs> difference doesn't whatsoever. 
which yeah. must be easier for you, Ella, because you know with people dieting down, they tend to like their mood swings and they're in you know yeah. in a terrible emotional states and whatnot. Yeah. Or is he just like that all the time anyway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> and that's it for Ella. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so but uh, coming into this match up, um, any any thoughts? Like, have you have you got a game plan in mind already after watching those videos of the boys? Uh, enjoying some success over Tarrant. Yeah, it's going to go outside. Yeah, if he's watching, he can know it's going outside, man. Wow. Yep. wow. This this angle will not open up. Wow. There wow. You, go. you heard it. You heard it here first. It will be in two days' time. He's super excited to see this match. It's going to be incredible. It's so good to have and you coming over. Good position. This. I'll hold him. <laughs> just look at the camera. Wow. <laughs> wow. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe if you're up, say two zero or something, you might be in that position. You're yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to freestyle a little bit here. <laughs> 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 but uh, incredibly strong, Taryn. It'll be a, a great match. And uh, yeah, we'll just there's a couple of matches that I that we haven't talked about yet. I just wanted to get your thoughts yeah, on quickly. Sure, okay, sure. okay. Adam Laura and Adam Marcus Atirai. Oh yes. Yes, so some some of the biggest men in Australian arm wrestling coming around. Mm. I've I'm gripped sure. Marcus once, and I couldn't do anything with him. Wow! But um, Adam is very technical. Yeah. I don't I don't know if he like gets the shoulder on the table, but he, like he's a guy at um training in Sydney, Murray and Adam, the guys we go to when we want to learn stuff or what to do in certain positions and stuff. Mm. I think Adam, will, you know, he's mm. too versatile. He can do anything. Hmm. So Marcus has got something he'll lose, he'll adapt, he'll do something else. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I do think Adam's going to get it. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. interesting. And yeah. he is strong, man. His hand has leveled up. He's taken it seriously. Yeah? Yeah, that's for sure. Mm. Wow. I can promise you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the main event. It's uh, Ryan Bowen versus uh, Matawaringi oh. Heta Morris. Well and done. There you go. <laughs> I think you said that completely Can you wrong. say it again? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it backwards. Uh, <laughs> Sounds Mr. Same. Heta Morris. That's a little easier. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so first, uh, so it would be six rounds. Uh, mm. How do you see that one going? Have you gripped him by the, by the uh, way, Matt, with Matt I? No, oh, no, I've met him, but um, I didn't get on the table with him. Yeah, I shook his hand, man. He's got right. like, his hand's like a bum cheek. <laughs> 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 He's got the massive <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was still like, oh, I don't even know. They gripped up a few years ago, didn't they? Yeah. And, um, mm. um, Fights Unleashed, it was 3-3. Three, three. Right. Mm. Yeah. How do you put... Oh, <laughs> I didn't even know. Right. <laughs> Hard to pick a winner in that one. Yeah. yeah. Like, who have you guys got? Uh, yeah, I think based off of... Well, as I said, I haven't gripped up with, with uh, uh, Mr. Hedda Morris at all, but uh, Ryan just felt unstoppable to me. Uh, I had he, he let me get to almost pinning uh, like an inch away with my entire body weight on, on his arm, <laughs> and he literally just lifted me over the table. <laughs> so I was like... If anyone could do that, I was There like, is a bit oh. of a weight difference, but... <laughs> yeah, well, no, we're about the same at that no, point. Um, Matt oh, with him. Brian. Yes, mm. that's true. That is true. Is yeah, it like absolutely. 50 kilos? Well, he's enormous. Uh, Matt is, is he's he's about 165, boy. 170 kilos. So he is a giant of a man and yeah. uh, incredibly strong bench press champion for New Zealand mm. and uh, easily doing... It. He did a video, uh, 140 kilos uh, for 100 reps. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, man, I can't lift that once. I think, got, uh, I think he got 36 in a row or something yeah. on one of them. Yeah. Mm. Like, he's just a, a, an absolute monster. I can't do that with the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this builds a different stuff, you That's know. Right. So, it's right. a, so it's superhuman mm. like strength, isn't it? That's so, right. And will it translate onto the table? Mm. Yeah. That's right. And he put it all through his hand and wrist. That's, the, yeah. that's what the world needs to know. That's right. Well, I think with Ryan having peaked. Peaked for three different opponents that were of mm. elite caliber. I won't say who the mystery opponent was, but to uh, have uh, Todd Hutchings uh, as mystery. one of them that we did know about, uh, and you know, working towards him and Chance uh, yeah. Shaw, absolutely. So he's been working very, very hard, and he's he's uh, sort of raised to the next level. I think uh, he'd be hard to stop. We'll find out. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Mm. Absolutely. And is there any one of the matches that we haven't? Named on there, so uh, we've gone Josh Barker and Taryn Broad. We've got Christian Bowes and Stephen Carroll. We've got there's eight in total. Last. Adam Laura and Marcus Hero yep. is three, and yeah, uh, Matt Waringi, Ryan Bowen is four, and Ryan Bowen and um, Lachlan Carpenter is five. Mm. Uh, we've got Tom Demkowski and Las Motta is six, and 
Fucking there is. <laughs> it's always hard. Mario to and uh, oh, yeah, of course, yeah. the two Mario title Gunters. matches. Yeah, yeah. Mario yeah. and Goodses and uh, Jamie and Hamza. So yeah, those are the eight ones. We've covered all of them. That's right. Yes, well Absolutely. done. I wanted to make <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make sure that we did hit all the bases on that. <laughs> Somebody isn't sitting there going, "They didn't talk about me." <laughs> <laughs> Because that's exactly how all of them sound. Yes, <laughs> yes, just on the phone. That's right. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much for coming into the podcast. Thanks so much for coming to Adelaide and being part of the AWE event as well, Josh. And uh, and and thanks so much, Ella, for being such a wonderful Thank support you. and spreading the word for uh, female arm wrestling here in Australia as well, and being such a great advocate and ambassador of the sport. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you both at the Apex Sport Fest. And if people want to come along and they want to grip up with Ella and test their metal and see what it's like um, yeah. they can do that the tables will be open I'm sure Ella will be up for it yeah. and, uh, and and of course Josh after you've uh, taken out Taran Broad I'm sure you won't mind uh, sharing some lessons with those <laughs> that want to know a little bit more about what it's 100%. like to be an elite arm wrestler so uh, you'll be able to see both of these guys at the Apex Sport Fest and we won't see that picture anymore ever again <laughs> Ever again. How does that happen? <laughs> 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 just falling apart. Man. That's great. <laughs> I love it. Um, and, um, yeah. and on that note, that's, that's the so, end so, of the socials session. Socials for Josh. Oh, socials for Josh. It's yeah, uh, socials for Josh. Uh, Jim Junkie Josh. Jim Instagram, Junkie Josh. And I'm going to get a YouTube together and start doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're training and teaching people how to do the press. Wonderful. Yeah. See if you can get a picture to fall off the wall right at the end of your podcast. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, part of, it's part of our production values here. <laughs> Thanks so, so much, guys. No worries. Absolute pleasure. We'll look awesome. forward to seeing you uh, at the Apex Sport Fest 3. That's at the Nord Oval. It's the 25th of February. That's this Saturday. So uh, if you haven't already, head over to diamondbackfc.com. Get yourself a ticket or... Tickets are available at the gate if you just don't get around to ordering them online. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. I'll be there. Matt will be there. Yep. These guys will be there. So <laughs> we'll see you there. I'm Dave and this is Matt. And this has been the Daily Combat Podcast. <laughs>